our good sense, guides our debate and discussion. On today's edition of Press R, we're going to discuss two topics. The first one is weak opposition and civil society. Is it a curse or a blessing to our society? Then the second topic, political parties, are their political formations or their are personal properties, the way we see it in Cameroon. And to discuss these topics that have been described as uh, actually topics of the day of our time, we have uh, four gentlemen here with me. I'm going to start from the um, extreme left of the set. Lucas Tenen Jeffo is the publisher of the reporter newspaper. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Kilian. Uh, good afternoon, televiewers, and happy Palm Sunday to all of us. Uh, you know, today is the day that Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly, as uh, we are made to believe. And, uh, you know, uh, advertisers consider today as uh, one of the days that the, for, the forerunners of advertisement, because when we are going somewhere and you see Palm Sunday, it's on an indication that something extraordinary is going to happen. Ah, so, that's good. Thank yeah. you. Happy Palm Sunday to you. Thank you and next to you, next to me as well, is Professor Willy Broad Zengwa he is a professor of history. He is also a political scientist. Welcome to the program, sir. Well, it's my pleasure to be here again today. I want to wish uh, the televiewers a uh, happy Palm Sunday. And I'm glad to share the same uh, platform with very able gentlemen. It's our honor to have you today on the set, Thank Prof. Um, here it's uh, a man of law. Uh, barrister Ernest Maka, he is a barrister, law and solicitor. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Kilian. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the set to my co-panelists and thank you for inviting me. Njem Bonde, our uh, able colleague in CRTV, head of the political service, CRTV radio, and he is always here. He makes sure that everything he says vibrates everything around him. Uh, Albert Njem Bonde, welcome to Press Out today. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, happy Palm Sunday to the viewers. I was happy that Tenen was talking about Palm Sunday and uh, kind of reminds us of childhood days, right? When um, taking of photographs was often done oh, yeah. in uh, a background that yeah. was full of palms, uh, uh, of palm fronts. And we do not go far to look for the palms. Exactly. Today we have to go <laughs> very far. Sometimes we don't find them. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. We are not going to waste any time. The first slot of our program, that's a page setter, is press review. And our lady on the beat, Emanuela Vemni, is always there. Emanuela. What did the newspapers say this past week? The OC Ninja feud over who succeeds Frundi as SDF party chair is yet to end with newspapers reporting on recent developments. The Sun headlines Ninja dares Nick as he says on the Guardian Post, you would have to choose between OC and literal SDF. A move lifetime sees as Ninja going insane in desperate, vicious and futile attempts to push OC out of SDF. Perhaps so because the literal SDF ESCO excludes OC from party on the horizon, acting in controversy with fragrant violation of Article 15B of the Constitution on the voice. But a NEG member clarifies on the Herald Tribune, Joshua OC is still SDF militant at regional level. Despite public bashing, OC boasts ready to sign another petition to U.S. Congress on the Guardian Post. Even though the same paper reports that party officials say Ninja grossly ignorant of party texts. The Northwest then registers 14 more deaths from COVID-19 in one week on the horizon at a time government sees mass testing paying off on Cameroon Insider. But PCC moderator tells Christians on the Guardian Post what you need is vaccine of truth, not COVID-19 vaccine. Coming when Scientific Council recommends hold to use of AstraZeneca vaccine in Cameroon on the horizon, Health Minister then affirms effectiveness of herbs in treating COVID-19 on the Guardian Post. Just when fresh cholera outbreak kills one, ten others affected on the Herald Tribune. Death then hits National Assembly again as Cameroon's youngest MP dies at 33 on the post weekend, while the feces of the old young governing Cameroon are published on the Guardian Post. 
Cameroon then registers 24,000 road accidents, 9,000 deaths in eight years on the post weekend, a worrisome situation that pushes Honorable Malomba to lead Crusade to curb road accidents on the horizon. This when the deplorable state of Babaju Bamenda Road worsens as thousands of travelers are stranded for over 24 hours on the Guardian Post. The protests of DDR Boya ex-combatants again over failed promises from government. The intervention of Konak to save a remaining state land from land grabbers in Boya. The 105 private media organs said to share 120 million CFA francs as government aid. The African Development Bank warning to Cameroon over rising indebtedness to China and Cameroon's first film, Therapy, to air on Netflix also form stories reported by the papers this week. Let's now end our press review with a story on the Horizon newspaper where 12 Cameroonians have received awards and cash for not only achieving a lot for themselves but contributing to nation building. Unlike other awards in Cameroon, the 12 laureates went home with a certificate and cash on the 15th anniversary of the Horizon newspaper. Among the laureates are Mfon Mokete, the fourth Ekoko, paramount ruler of the Bafos, Ate Francis, Sona Kambo, chair, publisher of the Guardian Pose and God Christian and my humble self, amongst others. Until I come your way again, this is your hour with the press. God willing, Manuela will be with you next Sunday for the same debate, the popular program. Thank you very much, and we are going to get straight away into our discussion, the first uh, topic that we're handling. Today is opposition and civil society. Is it a curse or blessing to Cameroon? There are so many things that might not have happened because we have the weak nature of these very important uh, human uh, um, aspects, human domains. There are equally things that have happened because they are there. Have they helped us or oh, they have? help us in the opposite direction, not to go the way we should have gone. That's exactly um, what's go what, what we're going to be talking about in the first segment of uh, this program. Uh, we'll begin with Professor um, Willy Brandzengwa, Civil Society and Opposition. Um, uh, we said this week, do we agree that Civil Society and uh, Opposition Opposition, we're talking about opposition parties in Cameroon. Um, are they weak, according to you? Well, interesting question. Um, as op opposition, I would prefer to call them alternative political parties in the country and civil societies. Are they weak? Well, I can say they are weak and they are weakened. There are two uh, groups of persons in the tango. They are weak in terms of uh, their political strategies or in their civil society strategies. What strategies have they adopted in order to uh, rethink the rebuilding of the nation Cameroon? L let me say that we have three categories of, of people in, in these groups. We have people who are very selfish, very egoistic, self-centered. Uh, these people want everything to be around them. Uh, we have another category of people who are, I call them, ethnically based. A lot of ethnocentric tendencies. And the people who have these ethnic feelings always think that their ethnic groups should surpass other ethnic groups. So their mindset is always around their ethnic group. And then we have the citizens. Uh, I dare say effective citizenry where people should think about the state, their relationship with the state, their relationship with the other people within the state. Now, these are all subsumed within uh, the political parties and, 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 and the civil societies we have. So we have civil societies which are very self-centered. But let us understand that they are not only weak by the failure of raising correct strategies, but they are being weakened by the system. Somebody weakens them by playing politics. Uh, let, let me say before we get to the, to the other, we are talking about politics, uh, I should just say that uh, in, politics in, is in, coining in. policies to gain power and govern people. So 
if you don't coin better policies to get the power to govern people, one of the policies adopted by the system is divide and rule. Now, so we... that is what the strategy they've used to be able to weaken the weak opposition and civil societies. Mm, but the civil society and opposition weak, weakened, as you have said, cannot give that as a justification that they have been weakened. Well, you're right. In a and democratic society. In a democratic society, that is why I, start, I, 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 I defined democracy. They have failed to develop policies, to coin effective policies to gain power and govern the people. So, the civil societies have failed to coin activist uh, 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 civil society tendencies, which should be able to be people-centered, effective citizenship, so where what, they consider the citizen at, at the center of their policies. Now, uh, Barrister, we talk about uh, opposition parties. He has said he prefers to talk about the alternative in governance. I, I forgot alternative you. Political parties. Uh, alternative political parties. Mm -hmm. Civil society, we talk about civil society uh, summarily. Can we know from you who is civil society and who is not? Uh, civil society um, uh, means, um, talks about um, a group of um, people in the society, in a country, in a state that um, work to defend collective interests. Their interest is to see that those who do not have the voices, who cannot talk, they talk for them and they get them involved in the activities of the state of a, of a country. And so these are the people uh, we call um, the, the group of persons that are, they could be in uh, organized structure, NGOs, associations and all of that to defend collective interests. Yes, um, now I got a summary kind of snappy definition of civil society as non-state and non-profit making. Yes, uh, 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 absolutely. Their interest is collective. They, they are for collective interest. They are not for their personal interest, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's why they are not there to make money. And once you bring in money, it becomes, or profit, it becomes business. It becomes self-interest. But because they are for collective interest, they, don't, they are non-profit making. They are not for profit. And so they stand for general good. Now, I said, me, yes, I, I will, uh, are lawyers yes. of civil society or the other side? Yes, uh, I, I mean, the fact that lawyers <laughs> stand, lawyers stand for um, general interest, you know, it is true that um, in course of their activities, they make money. They, make money. <laughs> they are, first, they do personal issues, but when they come to general interest within the core of the, the structure that puts them together, at that level, the Bar Association is a civil society organization. Let us even concede that at that level, they have to make money in order to survive. But lawyers who now are in politics, they have taken political positions, are they still of civil society? Yes, um, as far as the, within the political sphere, you can consider them civil society uh, members of the society. Now, when they are operating their personal businesses, you know, from time to time, they can get to general interest, but first, at their uh, individual levels, it is about uh, their personal interest first. Thank you. Uh, and Jim Bonnet, you will speak, but you wanted to clarify something. Well, when, I just uh, wanted to say that they should, they should be, we should, uh, the dichotomy should be made clear between what is and what, and what should not. be. Mm -hmm. uh, because the civil society, as uh, the able barista just defined, is what should be. But what is, there is a strict dichotomy. I think that's where I wanted to come in yeah. uh, with regard to the community in which the civil society operates it's, it's, in. Mm -hmm. The society in which the civil society operates in gives it the strength to be able to do what it's supposed to do gives it the recognition. And that's where, when Prof talked about selfishness, I had to differ with him a bit because you may have all the interests of the community if the terrain is very, very hostile to you and sees you as an enemy or adversary, it becomes difficult for you to carry out the general interest, which is the paramount 
uh, role that a civil society organization plays. I see Alban Jembondi is so itchy. He wants to speak. Um, can, can we, before you uh, give your points, can you begin with some examples of what uh, uh, constitutes civil societies? I know we have uh, churches, we have schools, we have NGOs. Are there some others? That we, we, we are, I think, I think um, the, the most obvious of them that treat with societal issues every day have to do with uh, civil society organizations relating to um, consumption. Mm -hmm. We know almost 90% <laughs> of Cameroon has experienced um, power cuts, cuts recently. Uh, water is a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, we have had moments where certain parts have um, witnessed shortages in the supply of some basic commodities and uh, uh, generally that is where um, a lot of Cameroonians expect civil society organizations to come out in the defense of uh, the collective good. Mm -hmm. um, now the, the, the question is um, who are they, how are they structured, um, how do they operate? on the field. It, does it end with just communiques where um, uh, or uh, memorandums that they write and, 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 and send to government? I think that is where uh, their weakness or their strength um, uh, could, could be assessed. We have a situation where um, consumers are virtually at the mercy of uh, or the dictates of uh, the, 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 the producers, the, the, the producers and, the and the suppliers. Mm -hmm. You take, for instance, um, you have problems with um, rising uh, bills in electricity. You definitely don't know who, who to address yourself to. And, and I think that um, when uh, Prof talks about alternative political parties, it, it brings me also to that, um, to say that um, you cannot adopt the same strategies and expect a different result. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to have spent quite a lot of my professional life in sports, uh, where we, we are told that uh, if you think that government is not doing things correctly, mm -hmm. um, an opposition or an alternative political party um, simply should uh, present alternative ways of managing these problems and put before before the people who will then appreciate and 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 make choices when the time comes. But the the question is, do we have those alternatives? Um, and that is where the problem is. Because, we, 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 because we, you are raising a point, it's part of the uh, second part of this first topic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, those who are watching you from the opposition, especially the SDF that has been leading until recently when 2018-2020 uh, uh, elections, when they've been uh, retreating in terms of opposition as leading opposition parties. We have so many other opposition parties that came up with certain things that have been implemented in government. Government actually accepts that they are the ones who brought those ideas. Um, we have some of those things. What no doubt, no doubt you cannot undermine the fact that, uh, let me take for instance electoral reforms, the evolution of electoral reforms in Cameroon. You can't deny the fact that the SDF did a wonderful job in, in pressing for, for those reforms. The, the electoral code, for instance, Transparent isn't, isn't the best. But we must admit that the electoral code is in the best, but we must admit that quite some progress, significant progress has been made, and the SDF can um, take quite some credit, we, significant we, credit for we, that. We are going to but, talk about yeah, SDF. But, but, uh, we will not go deep into that because we'll talk about uh, this. Uh, it's been weakened more now, we mm -hmm. want to think, because mm -hmm. of uh, power tussle in the SDF that's known to everybody. We have not uh, given the uh, opportunity to Lucas to uh, talk about the weak civil society and opposition generally? Uh, actually, I think the civil society in Cameroon now is weakened. But I have seen the civil society in Cameroon operate. If you remember, Bernard Njonga had Adik. He used Adik to push for the ban of imported chicken. That was mm -hmm. of questionable quality in Cameroon. Mm -hmm. Okay, At that time, that was the civil society that was acting. He raised awareness and government actually banned the importation of frozen chicken, frozen chicken of doubtful quality. And the local farmers who were producing chicken could make some profit. That was good. But 
his popularity in that sphere went into his head and he turned Adik into a political party and it was weakened and he failed. Till then you don't hear about Adik, you don't you neither heard about his political party nor his uh, civil society organization. Um, and most of the civil society organizations that we have here, like the consumer, as Abe was talking, the consumer, the consumers are at the mercy of most of these companies. Go even to the telephonic companies; those are providing us telephone uh, companies. You, when you go to buy a, a, a SIM card, they don't tell you the 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 the, 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 the rules, the, the options that are there. Yes. Immediately you slot your SIM card into your phone. They start giving you advertisement. They send advertisement. They send messages. They flood your phone with messages, and no, we are at the mercy. Nobody questions. You don't even know how you, how they they, they 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 build you on your consumption. So the middle person in this uh, case is supposed to be the civil society. It's That's supposed to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be the civil society. The civil society is supposed to rise up. You see, in some countries, you say whether it is a curse or it's a blessing. It might be a blessing in disguise in the fact that they don't push people to go on the streets. That's no a blessing. Yes, when you don't, mm. when the civil society is weak, it's a blessing to the ruling government mm. because it doesn't push people to go to the streets and claim what is rightfully theirs. Because look at, you see, uh, Kilian, uh, at times it pains me that we are in Cameroon. I think apart from two or three divisions that are named after different structures like mountain, like Fakou, right. and the, all are named after rivers, mm -hmm. and we don't have water. It's a paradox that in Cameroon nearly all the divisions are named after water. And there are towns in Cameroon that go for weeks, for months without water. Even what the do we blame that? Are talking about has yeah. water sources. Yes, you see. So, the, and the civil society, nobody thinks seems to care. So far as it doesn't con it concern you as an individual, you don't care. But if you're a civil society, you're supposed to bargain for the common will, for the common good. Yes, you just uh, entered the crux of the matter, uh, Prof. We'll go around and say, is it a blessing or a curse? Well, I, what do you uh, think? Uh, before, if you permit, civil society. We're going to talk about yeah, civil political society, parties. Civil right? society and political party. Civil society. Fascinous. I'm surprised when Barista said that he disagreed with my classification of the peoples of Cameroon, and I want to be very emphatic on that. Cameroon is divided into three groups of people: people who are very self-centered, people who are thinking only about their ethnic groups, and people a few who have effective citizenship in their tenets. Why I say this is because the civil society organizations are classified in those tenets. That is why a greatest majority of the civil societies, I'm a civil society activist, the greatest majority of the civil society organizations in this country do not think citizenship. Mm -hmm. They are either selfish to make money, I, I, I said we should do the difference between the theory and the practice. Mm -hmm. Many of the civil societies are out to feel that some of the civil society organizations exist in private uh, mallets. They have no structures. Yes, and they go around pretending to be doing what the thing should be. I, th I think there are a few civil society organizations which have been able to impact in one way or the other. I think I don't need to list them. But the greatest majority of this civil society is a wish should have been able to coin their strategies and policies enough to push government action to be for the interest of the greatest majority of the Cameroonian people. I think that is what I, uh, I understand. Ba Barista, you move that uh, debate forward? Yes, I, um, I, I disagreed with Prof with regard to the selfishness aspect. And that's why I cited the issue of the society in which the civil society organizations find themselves in. If the society is the type that encourages um, compensating members of civil society because they belong to a certain ethnic groups, a group, it means that it is a society, it is a country, it is a state that encourages um, the, the, the state of affairs that makes it difficult for civil society to strive in it. If the, the, the state sees the civil society as a structure, just like in many countries, that is there to call their attention to the things that are not working, for the things to get better, you know. We will not be getting into uh, ethnic groups and, 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 and all other aspects that bring in this, this uh, selfishness. So my blame gets back to the context, our country, whereby the tendency is to penetrate and see how we bring out those we consider as creating problems to us because we don't, I mean the state, you know, does not encourage alternative opinion 
or proposal or contributions for the interest of for the general good. That's what I that's what I meant. I was not disagreeing with regard to and, um, <laughs> Kilian, 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 I, I also think I also think that uh, um, political parties like civil society organizations remember I said who are they how are they structured what is the intent um, I think that we we have in different countries um, civil society organizations and opposition political parties which are created on the basis of what is experienced in particular parts of certain countries you, you take, for instance, uh, we have civil society organizations which are fighting only on the management of uh, forest reserves, particularly in the east region of Cameroon, way, which is very wealthy, everybody knows, but that, where the lack of basic facilities is very, very obvious. Mm -hmm. um, you have civil society organizations, for instance, I come from FACO Division, Nobody from Fraco Division will be happy over the management of lands Nobody, no. in, in, in that Not part of the country. Of of the, yes, that, yes that by extension, is the whole of Cameroon that feels the pinch the of the is. mismanagement or the issues of governance of certain aspects. Uh, but certain civil society organizations or, or uh, political parties do emerge because in those parts of certain countries, they feel the pinch more than what we can call the national fraternity. Mm -hmm. but, but, but I think that um, uh, it bounces to the whole issue of what we're saying, the defense of the collective good. Defense uh, of the, yes, Prof. Uh, uh, we'll just we'll move out of this, uh, yes. yes. I, I think we should not always put the state, uh, the blame game of the state, because who is the state? If Jimbo speaks brightly about uh, you know, uh, the resources within FACO or land, which are the civil society organizations which have come out overtly to stand for and the defend. and defend the interests of the have nots, the greatest majority of the people of FACO. That is what we are talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not an issue of the state. Boy. Somebody, some mm -hmm. considering himself a civil society activist, should be able to come up. I don't want to list a few of the civil society organizations which have been doing things in the field. There have been quite a handful. But what we are saying is that these civil society organizations should be much more people friendly. They should work for the greatest interest of the greatest majority of the people with action plans that should be able to push the government. Let me say, I use divide and rule. Sometimes some of the civil society organizations are working to promote the interest of those they should not protect. Mm -hmm. right. and that is what we are talking okay, about. Okay, that is uh, 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 vested interest. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Lucas. Uh, the last thing on this civil society, and we'll look at the weakened opposition and why the opposition parties have been weakened. Uh, you want us to talk about civil society? No, let us go to uh, weakened civil opposition. Opposition. Okay, because, the weakened, yes, weakened opposition. Uh, uh, I, I said the piece. We yes. weakened started opposition. talking about yes. yeah. the SDF that used to spit fire and everybody knew about See, that. Uh, Over time, now it's no longer the same thing. Uh, we know about the uh, CRM that is not very old, but within the short time that the CRM party came up, it actually um, created news. Uh, it's, it's still in the news, but it's already why we can talk about the debacle of uh, the CRM party. We have had uh, political parties. We have the NUDP, we have uh, MDR, we have ANDP, we have uh, FSNC, and so many other political parties that came up and they were spitting the same fire. They have been either frustrated, weakened, or gone into alliances, which means they are working, we don't see them again as alternative uh, the, power, as they said. So the, the, the what, issue, what, what, uh, what causes this? The issue is this, when uh, a political party is created and then the political party's ideology surrounds, is surrounded by the aura that the creator has, it becomes a problem. And every time a political party is created, people like new things. People will flow into it. And the ideology of the party so some people who join political parties without even know the ideology of the party. Mm -hmm. When the SDF was created in 1990, their motto was, uh, motto was uh, power to the people and equal opportunity. And actually in 1990, it was power to the people. The people could decide. And then there was equal opportunity. Whoever wanted to become a mayor or a parliamentarian was given the opportunity to become. That was how the SDF was gaining grounds. When the SDF was gaining grounds, some people within the party thought that it was had become a, a popularity court. 
You understand? Then they started arrogating the powers to themselves. As they were arrogating the powers to themselves, the party people who, who could not, who were no longer comfortable with them, or who the, the, the party tenants were no longer comfortable with them, were pushed away. And you could even hear at certain times they say, go and kill your own party. Then it started weakening, and the dwindling fortunes of the party were going. Why the 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 the, the, the aura around the, the chairman was increasing, and the the, the the fortunes of the party as a party were diminishing. Di were diminishing. Now, what the picture you've painted of the SDF is not different from uh, the NUDP. At the time, we could shake the whole of that side of the funnel. We have uh, uh, ADD, even uh, ADD, yes, of uh, uh, Gaga, Haman, uh, Haji. Uh, we even also had some other political parties that were. We had the UPC uh, parties that were actually very strong. Let me just let me just like you see. Prof. I was trying to say that when parties, when you, you the, the political parties, which are created because the, the work of a political party is to gain power and control power. But when once you are created, imagine that the SDF now is 30 years. There is a position, an opposition, a position, and opposition should be a transitional period. You go there, you form policies, and then get power. The SDF did something very good by creating within the SDF what we call the shadow cabinet. Say, so, okay, if we win, win power, this is what the, within our own shadow cabinet. Uh, these are means, the possible. These are the forces, means of communication. This is what it thinks. These are what they, those were alternatives, but. Remember, UPC was, was the first party. And when the UPC started its own wranglings, uh, Led Kodok went to the African Organization for Property, for Intellectual Property Rights, to have an intellectual property on UPC, which means that he wanted to own it. It is now, it was no longer a common will, but somebody's private property. Okay, we will talk about that because the next uh, discussion is about uh, uh, formation of personal property. Uh, on this uh, week, Weak, uh, weak opposition parties, uh, Prof? Yes, if we are talking about weak uh, opposition or alternative political parties, I, I will permit, I will pray that you permit me say that before we even talk about those political parties, there are three important words we must be able to know. Mm -hmm. Politics itself, mm -hmm. polity, which is a given political region, uh, area, and, pol and policies. What policies each political party coins? These three words must go together. What weakens? We are talking about national political parties. If we have to consider national political parties, I might make a very sweeping statement that we have only one national political party. Because the other political parties seem to have crafted out different polities that they call theirs within the country. Mm -hmm. That is why if you see the SDF, it has its own polity, which is not national. If you go to uh, CDU, it has its policy that they call their own, the noon. You go to all the political parties have polities, and they are not playing the national political role that they are supposed to play in order to counteract in our, the major CPM In our day-to-day -day political, political language, the jargon, we say they are fiefs. Well, th that is their polities, and mm. that makes them not to be national. And that gives credence, I mean, more power to the ruling party, which has decided to implant itself all over the national territory. Uh, don't forget, I said that. It is a matter of coining policies in order to consider Cameroon to be the national polity. Yeah. All the political parties must engage in that. Yes, uh, by, well, let us say that these people have understood um, that the force against them is too strong and they are Republicans and it's a blessing to us in Cameroon. Well, I don't think that they have understood. They have not understood. Because if they have understood, they would have been able to come together and play a single op force against the, go the governing house, the current governing house. L let me say that the political parties have been very, very insensitive to the plight of even their polities. If I have to talk about the SDF, for example, there is no reason why the SDF went in for the last elections. When they knew that their polity, I mean the areas, what has, you call fear, had been weakened, weakened to the fullest. And that is why they, it is very clear that there is no, they will not come in with any senator in the uh, next election. Uh, so they have, they have not been very strategic and being sensitive 
to the plight of even the people within their fears. Yes, let us also say uh, that may be, as you said, sweeping to say they will not come in the next election with NSA. No, 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 there will be no senator. It's very clear if we have to do what is happening. We have one council. We, 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 have, we have up to four, five, appoint, four years. Senators are voted by specific people. Mm -hmm. And the SDF does not, does not have what it takes to the give electorate. the electorate what it takes to give them senate let senators. me let me tell you let me tell you that it could be you different never know. Let, let, let me tell well, you let politics. me tell you that it could and be different they play their politics uh, very well it, it could be and different negotiate with the system see, to see I, I want to give you two examples in Nyonga, in Nyonga Ekele, uh there's one party Nyonga Ekele is in the is in the center region a division where you have this new party the pcrn the, the pcrn they actually had more uh, voters in, in the municipal mini, councillors. Mini, mini, councillors in the regional election than the CBDM, but the CBDM won. I give you another example in the far north. I, no, I'm telling you to say if we go by your uh, we analysis, have one council in the northwest region for the SDF, or if I am not mistaken. I'm just uh, giving you in terms of majority, yeah. it is not. I mean, it is a, in terms of absolute majority, except the play, the politics, I mean, the background politics, that's coining the policies, in partnership with those who are in power to do the politics of negotiation. In the far north, another example, to tell you that in politics, you cannot be absolute. Uh, you have the FSNC See? party uh, that did not actually have the majority, but they won certain positions there. We meet... Uh, in terms of absolute majority, it's not a given. I, I, under, I understand. Yes, uh, uh, I um, understand, Professor, when he says um, that because uh, with just one um, council, um, it's pretty difficult mm -hmm. out, of, uh, out of 34, 34 so. councils yeah. in yes. the Northwest having just Pamenda II. Mm -hmm. In simple mathematics, it makes it absolutely impossible. Uh, but when I say uh, you never know, okay. the political landscape can change that may warrant uh, this or that to happen and probably at the end of the day have uh, council elections before senatorial. So you never know. That's correct. Uh, uh, political scientists have spoken. Political scientists have spoken. The head of uh, political service, uh, CRTV <laughs> Radio, has spoken. I, I leave it at that. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 but it's that the SDF is in trouble. Now, let us listen to um, a, 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 a professor, a political scientist, Professor Matthias Eric uh, Owona in Guinea who first begins by telling us what is happening in the SDF party. I think that the Social Democratic Front is facing an internal struggle, an internal struggle with uh, two factions, uh, respectively led by Honorable Joshua Ossi, and Honorable Jean-Michel Nietzsche. Uh, this struggle began when the chairman, uh, Nijon Frundi, said that he was close to retirement. The main stake of this struggle is uh, the leadership, is the central leadership. Every faction wants to, to take the leadership in order to, to be at the front to control the party. Honorable Nietzsche represents what I can call the hawks in the party, the, the hardline faction, and Honorable Joshua Ossi represents the doves and the, 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 soft, the soft line of the party. I think that the, the Social Democratic Front has faced in the past many crises of the same type. In the 90s, you have a, a struggle between Nijon Frondi and Suleiman Mahamat in the, uh, the beginning of the uh, 2000s. You have uh, the struggle with uh, other politicians like Christophe Takuju, Siga Sanga, and in the, uh, the, the, same, the, the, the same decade you have also the struggle with Bernard Muna. I think it is not the, the first crisis of this type in the Social Democratic Front and I don't think the Social Democratic Front is at the eve of a split, of a, a final split. I think that the National Executive Committee uh, has to take its responsibility in order to, 
to restore order and discipline in the party. Political discipline is very important for a political party. Uh, even if there is an internal debate within the party, it needs to be controlled. Professor Matthias Eric Onangine, political scientist. You listen to him, he said so many important things, uh, what's happening in the SDF. Uh, Barista is not announcing the final split. That's somehow positive that uh, the squabble in the SDF could come to an end, especially when he uh, comes up with something like the discipline. They, they have to be disciplined, those who are fighting. Um, I, I think that um, with regard to discipline, SDF has always been a very disciplined party. We have seen uh, sanctions within the party since its inception without taking the defense of uh, uh, SDF. It, it's, I think it has shown with the, in the past that within their ranks they don't joke when it comes to disciplining their uh, members uh, with regard to the rules of the party. That I don't doubt it. My worry is that um, when I get analysis like this, I, I come out with the impression that um, we are not um, looking at the context in which we find ourselves. Whatever we see today and what has happened in the past goes back to what I said earlier with regard to civil society organizations. The context, the, the, the society, the state or the government party, that is the main party that stands and the other side of the opposition parties likes what is happening within the SDF. And in that politics. Is what, in politics. Is yes. that, that's what they that, should, that is what is it? But let me tell you that that stems from the history of our country. That is, we are the party that stands on the other side of SDF. It's a party that comes from a one party state. And so the intention is to see how they weaken the other parties, no matter how they do it. And that's why when you hear issues of the ones weakening people, SDF or SDF yes, is weakening let me come, is let me come, uh, Kilian. That's why when you hear issues of uh, people were not supposed to go for elections, people took money. This, that has been the history of our country with political parties. The um, indecency that has characterized the political scene from independence. I think Prof is here. Prof can say it. It is a no news that even. Around in 1958, it is said that some group of persons were bribed in order to drop, you know, their support for a, 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 a particular leader. And that has been the trend within our society. And so when you see issues like this, I don't look at it in terms of discipline within the party, but that our context makes it difficult for political parties of the opposition to survive. Yes, uh, Prof, before you come in. Uh, um, Professor Matthias Eric Owonangini talked of that struggle in that party that's weakening it is a struggle of different visions. The faction, not only in terms of faction, but visions. The uh, conservative yeah, and the, the college the, soft. You, the SDF, I believe, is my opinion in a way, that the SDF will come out of this stronger. Because there are two, there are two, there are two factions. When OC came, in, that is 2018. It was a faction of the young coming in with a different dynamic. But they've not performed better. In a different dynamic in the party. The and party when, has instead not performed. Yeah, the well. party has not performed. I want to, I want to, I want to, to, to resituate it. He came with his own vision, a vision of a young, and the party promoted. Now, Ninja, we know Ninja as a hardline of the party, and Ninja and Osi come from the same political fear because. Ninja is the literal regional chairman. Osi is a parliamentarian from Uri. It is a the fact that Osi comes from Ndian, mm -hmm. and where he went and contested regional elections, or uh, contested senatorial elections, the same senatorial elections that Ninja John Fundi contested, he went and contested in Ndian, and when he failed there, he rushed to Douala and became a parliamentarian there. These two factions, you have the National Advisory Committee, NAC, you have the National Executive Committee that has to sit and decide to bring down, the, the, uh, quell down the, 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 the factions. But my problem there is the Article 8.2 of the SDF, which 
over the years has been used on people. Yes, and I think it, 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 just as a reminder, is um, the one that is disciplinary. It, 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 it sanctions you. Yeah, it's that, 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 any, that is this is the wording of the article A2, that any person caught in anti-party activity auto excludes himself from the party. Okay. Now, let's let, 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 me, let, let, me, let me tell you the weakness of Article A2. The weakness of Article A2 is that anti-party activities are not predefined. Good. Now, we got that. Uh, Prof. Uh, Nijon Frundi, call chairman across the board, he has announced that he's going to quit his position as leader of the party. Will the SDF stand or will it disintegrate? Is it the death of the party? Uh, well, uh you just pushed me uh, to answer a question maybe very clearly. Well, I, I think that uh, with the wish, I have a wish, that the SDF should come out from the current in blue glue stronger than ever. I, I want to say that I think there is a Ninche whom to me has remained f faithful to the original aspirations of that political party. Um, whether the new breed or so. I, I want to, to pray that Frundi will go and I think that he created a party that is going to live and that's going to last. But I want to beg to move away from your question, to say that we have concentrated so much on the SDF. Mm -hmm. And I will not want to concentrate on the SDF. I wish the party well. But I want to say that what is existing, happening in the SDF ex has happened in all political parties in Cameroon. It's good you say that. We, right. we, we so say that, that after, it is, after this. Yeah, we, we uh, wanted to say so, so that it shouldn't be exactly. as though it is SDF, yeah, SDF. Are, it has happened are, and it is happening you, you, in all the other political parties. We have cited uh, UPC, it has happened in the NUDP, even the MROC party that yes. is coming up strong. That are, so we should understand that in the game of politics, we always have those internal turmoils, yes. which requires the internal discipline, what we call party discipline, to be able to get to board. But those policies should be ahead to from bottom top, not imposed from top, top to bottom. bottom. Uh, we got you very right. We're talking about the SDF. Um, the President of the Republic has referred to him as chairman. His other people down the line have called him as chairman, and that word chairman is a mark of respect. The deputy uh, secretary general of the central committee of uh, the CPDM tells us when we go to him that they respect, they call him chairman. It's a matter of respect. It also means that he has some spiritual uh, attachment to that party. Njembonde, political uh, uh, exactly. reporter, that, that is political what, reporter. Mm -hmm. when he goes, is he going to tell it? guide that party or he leaves it if he leaves it will he stand the bottom line the message the lesson behind what is happening is make the party structure stronger than the person who leads them good as long as the leaders are stronger than uh, the political structures issues of succession become very difficult and like prof was saying it is something that gets around across all the political parties in cameroon are you sure without party chairman paul Bia, the cpdm will remain the same i'm not sure um uh, dr adamu damjoya is not there today um is the party the same i'm not sure despite the fact that it keeps its fear of the known division are you sure that if we talk about uh, succession in uh, the NUDP party without my Gary Bello Boba, it will remain the same? No. So what I'm saying is there are three aspects. In politics, there must be patience. A lot of our political following is not patient. Once the SDF said power to the people, they were running for power. It did not come as quick as they expected. Um, part of the fear behind the party started dwindling okay and that's why it's been progressive yeah. as time goes on it keeps so we need to uh, build a political mentality that calls for patience that people can mold something and see it grow Good. the second aspect i said about structure the party structures must be stronger the other is the choices what when do we make the choices what are the choices um we are thinking about uh, talking about the sdf is it the right time to let 
party chairman need John Frundi go? Mm. I don't know. I am personally not sure it is it was the time for him to mm, go. Thank you. Um, the other thank aspect is has he a choice of a succession? It could it could tilt the balance. I listened to him today the, saying that uh, he is not disappointed when you have children, you have to see them, you know, struggle and you know which position because, you stand. Because I also we, think we, that we, we, it's, we it's are going to we are going that. to come back to that point and look at uh, personalizing a political party, what that can be, and that's what we are talking about. But before we do that, we have uh, Elvis Deke, who has come in with reactions from some of you uh, who connected with us as uh, we went on with the debate that is current. Um, you connected as, even if you have not, you should go to CRTV web, Facebook page, and you will see us there. We're streaming live, and you could participate in this program. Some of you have done so, and Elvis Teke is here with your reactions. Elvis? Yes, uh, Kilian. It's a uh, pleasure to be here again. We begin straight away with uh, Tumfo Nico Hale, who says, Most structures in Cameroon are synonymous uh, to the names of those who hurt them, and this is painfully unfortunate. And do you know uh, what it would have meant if the General Assembly of the Cameroon Bar Association was called the Nico Halle General Assembly of the Cameroon Bar Association. When I was president for four years, we would have uh, emasculated or incapacitated its relevance. And uh, the General Assembly of the Cameroon Bar not belong to uh, Nico Halle. It belongs to the Cameroonians in general and to the lawyers in particular. And we have learned to uh, private state institutions. A political party is a state institution and should for no reason be attached to an individual. And uh, we proceed. We proceed once again with uh, Prince Metapene Obesa Mudika, who says political parties in Cameroon are becoming a liability to our democracy, as many of them, newly created political parties, are stooges, hand clappers, and dormant to the happenings in our beloved country. And uh, Elvis American says political parties in Cameroon are more of personal properties. Uh, when you begin to hear words such as natural chairman, then you already understand the gymnastics and you keep hearing uh, the same names for decades and decades. And uh, however, I'm happy with the guests on today's uh, panel, that is Elvis American. And Nico Halle comes again to say big opposition and civil society is a despicable cause. And this is eloquent proof of the very high level of moral decadence okay. in the country. Thank you very much, uh, Elvis. Uh, take care. You listen. You also watch uh, your reactions coming uh, from wherever you are because you connected to CRTV web Facebook and you brought those um, contributions. You can also watch this program at your convenience if you uh, just connect to CRTV web Facebook at, at any time you want to. You listen to that, uh, well, our uh, congratulations to Ntumfo ne Neku Hale, uh, who as an ambassador of peace, uh, got one other award, international award. He has got so many others. Uh, we know of Nelson Mandela, Memorial Lecturer, um, Universal Peace Federation. Um, there, there, there was one this week. Um, Abed, uh, we, we ended with you. We're going to start this this way now with you, uh, Lucas, uh, Tenen, Chefo. Political parties, as they have said, you've listened. What's when people pen personalize as personal property instead of political formation? Uh, is that what we have in Cameroon from all the reactions? Unfortunately, that's what we have in Cameroon. We have political parties that are tied to people, to, to personalities. The implications. In, I don't want to, 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 to go into to, to citing names of political parties, but mm -hmm. the political parties in Cameroon are synonymous to those who are leading it. They are synonymous. Because when you just say SDF, the picture that comes to your mind is need of Frodi. And Jimbody said something there, whether the political parties, whether the, the, the leaders want to leave now. You see, when you create... When you create a political party and create it in a, and you structure it in a way that the aura is around the person who is leading it, it is a problem. Mm -hmm. Because when that person is not there, it disintegrates. Mm -hmm. If the political party, if it is a structure that is strong, no matter who becomes chairman, the structure will continue to move. Mm 
But when once the structure is weak and the leader is strong, the aura is around the leader, there's a problem. So, Prof. Let, 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 me, let me learn. Mm -hmm. It's not only political parties that have been personalized. There's something I've noticed in Cameroon here. And journalists, I don't, I don't know where is the problem of journalists. The, the head of state created the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. Appointed members there. Appointed the former Prime Minister Peter Mafazi Musonge as the chairman. I have seen on media they write the Musonge Commission. I've seen it several times. And we, we know, you know in English that silence is acquiescence. He has not come out no one single time to say that commission does not belong to me. When you say you start calling it a commission, it means that it, it, they have personalized it. And when, let me learn, when you personalize something, people who are not in tangent with him, what do they do? They put aside all the work of the commission. Now, uh, Prof, what um, Lucas is saying holds strong. But in case of somebody like Peter Mafani Mesonge, who is, I want to say it clear, loud and clear, respected, I don't see anybody who doesn't respect the humility of the big person he is. Could it not also be, because you have talked about that one, probably the case may not be uh, true for Masonga Commission because he, he is respected. Could he, at this particular period, that, that commission is created to start solving one problem that is haunting all of us, could it not be an advantage for his case? And for some other cases. Well, I, th I think he shouldn't be uh, for his case, um, with all respect. I think he has all the humility, all the respect. He deserves it. But when it comes to national issues, he was appointed into a com to head a commission, a commission for national commission for bilingualism and multiculturalism. It shouldn't be attached to him as though it is his. Okay. If he has we'll done so, something so we'll, wonderful, mm -hmm. he should be appraised. We'll, an appraiser, we'll, I mean, he should be he should be congratulated by giving, I don't know, whether an ap epithome, yeah, we'll, maybe we'll, sometimes we'll, we'll later, got, we'll got not that when point. he's in active service. We've got, we'll got that point. Yes. But where I see coming to defend uh, him is that he's not the one who abrogated that title to himself. You are the ones who call him. The Amazon, yeah? given his credibility, well, we, were, we, we are not going to continue to talk about. I, I think Musonga. we're talking about the. We're not, yeah, we're talking about political parties, whether they are personal uh, or yes. uh, formations or personal property. I, uh, I think that th was, the last word. I yeah? think that just was just an aside. Yes. I think that if many people call it the Musonga Commission, it's because the commission is pretty new. That commission was quit, created in 2017 17. and it's just four years old. And if you want to relate that commission uh, to many, it's difficult to say National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism, which is pretty long. When you say the Musonga Commission, even a common man in the street will know that, okay, it's the commission which is headed by him. Now what? What, what is happening? We the, are thinking that by that time the commission would, would have, have made a name, would have been implanted yes, and um, things like that. Uh, but what I want to say yes, is that as far as... Um, 15 uh, seconds. Exactly. What we are saying is that um, uh, opposition or alternative uh, political parties should have a vision, sell that vision, and it is from that vision that the, the party will, will be um, identified. You know, in other countries, everybody knows. Can you really tell me what is socialism? Are you sure that a common man in the streets in Bamenda, when they say he's a, SDF is a socialist party, he the, pretty understands what, what is, socialism right. is all about? Uh, not, it's not really. because the, the vision is yeah. not being so Exactly. Pretty just, well. uh, yes, the last word. I just word. want to come in to yes. say that it is not about uh, the preaching of the giving the message, how the people have understood the message, and that's why there have been massive support of political parties in this country. It's not, that is not a message. Mm -hmm. I say there should be some sort of decency within our political atmosphere, whereby all the parties are given the equal opportunity to operate within this country. In that light, we'll no longer be talking about politics as a professor brought it here. The issue is because, and I maintain it, from our independence right now, our space has not been well defined. The uh, democracy and the politics within our, uh, our country has not been clean and so we must define where we are heading to if yes, not we continue in this one party mentality that we came with from independence thank you very much uh, we have uh, used all our time and exactly the people 
who are doing this are listening to us. They are watching us here, Barrister, and they are taking into consideration our suggestion, your suggestion. Thank you very much for coming, gentlemen. I want, also want to thank you for watching us from wherever you are around the world. Uh, it was a wonderful time today, Palm Sunday, to have you with us. If you missed out on this program, a rebroadcast comes up on Monday between 2.30 and 3 p.m. Or you just connect to CRTV web Facebook and you will watch us at your convenience. Thanks once again. Nice time.